five INFJ struggles up next. Every personality type struggles with something, and people who have the INFJ personality type are no exception. So let's look at five struggles that I know I've dealt with and other people who would say they're INFJs have dealt with as well. And the first one is sensory observations. If you look at our function stack, what we're best at is introverted intuition. And that means we make connections. We think about the big picture. We see patterns really easily. We are futuristic in many ways, and we're very intentional. We can boil things down to, it, to their essence and really pick out a key idea after seeing what a lot of people have said. This applies really well in research, but we're not great at being in the sensory world and noticing particular things. That doesn't mean we don't really recharge by being outside, taking a walk by a stream or the ocean or enjoying animals or sights and sounds, the sun on our shoulders, but we're not as good at picking out particulars. I told a story not too long ago. Actually, it was long ago because it was like three years ago, but I told a story about driving through stop signs because I'd got, gotten lost in my thoughts and in my head, and that's a really common thing. I also can remember on a recent vacation, driving down the highway and having my GPS off so that it wasn't talking to me. I mean, I was still following it and totally getting lost in my thoughts so that I went right past the exit. And I really, really take my wife off that time. And I think this is a common thing for intuitives, but certainly for INFJs because we are dominant intuitives. And we don't necessarily think about the details. I mean, we will for a project. We can be very particular, but we're not looking for those particulars all the time like somebody who is a dominant sensing type might, like an ISFJ or an ISTJ. For instance, when I was at school and, and teaching, I'm still a teacher, by the way, when I see students, I'm not necessarily picking out, hey, what shoes are they wearing? Or what clothes are they wearing today? Or how do they do their hair? Or do they, they look like they're with it today in that regard? Or do they, they rush out the door? Other teachers I work with are very attuned to that sort of thing, but not me. It's a big struggle. And I always felt kind of stupid when we'd have meetings as an elementary school teacher, because I didn't notice those things when most of the sensors around me did. So that was definitely a struggle. And just in general, intuitives and sensors notice different things. Like in one book I read, they talked about the difference between what sensors and intuitives notice in a hit and run accident. And just to clarify, like you probably know this, but INFJs are intuitive. So if you're looking at a sensor, for instance, and they see or witness a hit and run accident, they might report that, hey, they saw a Cobalt 2015 Mustang where the driver wore sunglasses and had a white polo on and a red hat and he was slightly overweight. Whereas an intuitive might just get more of the general feeling like a, one of the cars was blue, people were angry, and they, they peeled out and left fast. They, they're going to get more of the general feelings, but those particular details are not going to be a strength. So when people ask you questions that ask for particulars for details, you can feel kind of stupid. At least sometimes I feel kind of stupid because it's not my strength. And that's certainly a struggle anytime you're asked to do something that doesn't come easily to you. Okay, on to struggle number two, getting lost in a project. And this one could go either way because it can be good at times when you're doing creative work, when you want to get a lot done, when you need good results. It can be great to immerse yourself in something whether it's research or a creative venture where you're, you know, right now I'm working on a video or where you're working on um, a piece of art or maybe you're writing a song or whatever it is that you're putting together. When you lose yourself in it, you're probably going to have a better final result. So this can definitely be a strength and a good thing. It becomes bad when you forget about other responsibilities or want to do it so much that you put those other things off. Uh, just another personal example I know that in the past I've irritated other people. I, you know, whether it's uh, my wife or or maybe teachers, when I've focused so much on one creative thing that I've left out other things I need to do. For instance, chores. Uh, when I do chores, it makes my wife very pleased, and when I don't do them, she feels unloved. So when I get lost in something, that's not necessarily a good thing, and it can be a big struggle because I'm missing out on something that's so important to her. So. Finding that balance between getting a time to get something done, but also making sure I stop in time to take care of other responsibilities or spend time in other relationships and other areas of my life is really important. Believe it or not, I don't know if you just heard my son in the background. I didn't time that. He just came in the door. So 
case in point, that's an example. So I'm stopping this right now so I can say hi to him and welcome him back from school is really important and valuable. But sometimes it's hard because you get lost in what you're doing and it's hard to be interrupted. And that's probably another struggle I could put in there. Interruptions are really challenging for INFJs. Okay, number three is taking life a little too seriously at times or way too seriously. One example of this is personal growth. We love personal growth. We love to see transformations. Again, that's part of introverted intuition and it's directed at extroverted feeling, which is people oriented. So we like it when we see things change, but particularly when we see ourselves change or others whom we love or have a relationship with change. We love that. We want people to grow and we take that very seriously because it's something we do well, quite frankly. It's something we value and it comes naturally to us. It's super easy to forget that not everybody cares about personal growth as much as we do. And that's okay. Other people have strengths too. And not everybody's going to value that. Should everybody grow? Yeah, but we need to cut people a break sometimes. And it's hard to forget that. It's okay to keep pushing yourself for the most part, but sometimes we need to let it go a little bit with other people. Another aspect of taking life too seriously is perfectionism. We can get extremely perfectionistic and maybe be a little critical of others when they're not living up to certain expectations we have. We can be judgmental to a certain extent. We come across as gracious, but at least inwardly, I can be critical and quick to judge when I should judge charitably. I should assume the best about the other person and think more about why he or she is doing what he or she is doing. But sometimes this was a big thing that I learned from a mentor and really appreciated. You can't always have a perfect final result. And that that eats at me because I want to do things really well. But sometimes just because of the way life is, you have to take the task you need to get done and fit it to the time that you have to do it. And that might mean that it's not that great, but you do the best that you can with the time you have allotted. And, and learning that and starting to apply that has helped me significantly. And it'll help you get a lot more done and just relax. And it's a good reminder that we're not in control. Another aspect of this is not making time to relax. I read a pamphlet a little while ago that said, INFJs maybe take life too seriously. And something they can do that can really help is to develop and invest in a hobby. And for me, something I've always enjoyed doing is fishing. And that's really helped me a lot uh, just to get away and spend time. Often it's with my son or with my dad or a friend throwing a lure out in the pond and trying to catch a bass or a trout. It, it just really relaxes me being out in nature and it helps me unwind and detach from things that maybe I take too seriously. So if that's not something you're already doing, investing in a hobby or if you're doing it, I'd encourage you to do it all the more or get it started. It's, it's a great way to not take life so seriously. And another element of this, just to wrap up the thought, is that sometimes we can take our work too seriously. And this isn't just specific to INFJs. This is true of almost every personality type, really, but especially some. We can really care so much about our work that we do it to the point that we're sacrificing other really important values, like family, for instance, or um, maybe church, or maybe just time spent serving your community, whatever it is. It's really important to, again, fit your tasks to your time and say, okay, I want to do this well, but that's all the time I have for that now. And really, it's amazing what you can get done if you put a strong endpoint on something and say, that's going to be it. I'm going to stop at that point. So taking life a little too seriously at times or way too seriously is a struggle. A fourth struggle is being overly sensitive. And you probably cringe when you hear that. Um, I hate thinking myself as oversensitive sometimes, but it's really true. I take criticism and feedback a little too seriously, or I'm quick to deflect it because I'm like, no, no, I wasn't that bad. But criticism is really so important to growing personally and growing in a way that you can benefit others around you. It's, it's critical to us developing so we can, we can um, serve others better. And really, it's because we care too much about what people think of us. At least I can say that. Sometimes I care more about what people think of me than I care about the other people. And that's really a downfall. Maybe that's just a personal thing for me. You can say if you can relate with that at all. But really, if I would receive the criticism, it would allow me to grow so I could better serve the other people. So maybe funnel that into your personal growth. Really, anytime you have somebody who's kind enough to tell you the truth, and help you grow who, who wants the best for you, even if they don't want the best for you, there's probably an element of truth in a lot of what people say, as long as they're not like a super um, negative, critical person all the time. 
there's something that we can learn from it and we should listen to. And really, in the end, flatterers aren't on our side. They might make us feel good in the short run, but it's the people who are willing to tell us the truth because they care about us or just have some truth to share that we can really benefit from. And one element that's helped me significantly with this is just thinking about identity. Ultimately, you need an identity that can withstand the criticism. If you have an identity that's performance-based, you're really going to struggle when you hear feedback from other people that's critical because it's going to tear at who you are. But if you have an identity that isn't based on what you do or how you do it, it will allow you to receive criticism. If you know you're loved, independent of your performance, that is so freeing. It's not going to make it easy, but for me, that's really helped with my sensitivity. Uh, for me, that's that's because I have um, a relationship with Jesus and I'm a Christian and, and my identity is based on that and not based on my performance. That frees me to actually hear criticism. And honestly, before that and before I even like dug deeper into that, it was really a struggle when someone would tell me something, it would ruin my whole day. But now it, it still kind of throws me off balance, but I can go back to that. Wait, it's not what I do that makes me who I am. No, I'm loved independent of that. And that allows me to actually hear the criticism and grow. So I'm not sure if you can relate to that or not, but that's been freeing for me. And finding an identity that can withstand the criticism of others is really important to growing. All right, the final struggle. Number five is avoiding confrontation. Sometimes the most loving thing to do is to come out and tell the truth. But it's something that I've always or often struggled with as an INFJ, and I think others do too. A lot of times it's so much easier just to slink away and slowly spend less and less time with other people until the relationship dies rather than just avoiding it or coming out and telling the person what the truth is. And obviously how you say it matters. You want to be constructive. You want to address the problem and build the person up, try to fix it because you love them and not tear that other person down. But that doesn't make it any easier to do. But we should probably do more confronting and than we do abandoning relationships and just throwing them out. I can think of some regrets. I think of at least one that really comes to mind that I wish I would have gone and and been more conf- confrontative. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> I should have confronted instead of just letting the relationship die off. So I'd really encourage you that to invest in that way to reflect on that particular one because it's definitely a struggle to want to avoid confrontation. But real relationships are the kinds where we give pushback, where where you have two people who are authentic and true and tell each other the truth. And I know we value that as INFJs, um, the truth and being true to our ideals. And that means really saying what we believe. And we will, but maybe saying it earlier than, you know, waiting till we get to the point that we're so fired up that it comes out perhaps overly strong. Maybe if we are a little bit, um, maybe if we acted earlier, we, we'd have a better outcome to that end. And now that I mentioned five things that are struggles for INFJs, I just wanted to encourage you you know what? These are normal struggles. I hope they, that you don't feel put down or like you're less of a person or less valuable because you struggle with these things. The thing to keep in mind is everyone, every personality type struggles with something or a number of some things. So we're no exception to that. And really this should lead us into greater interdependence and teamwork, which honestly, I think a lot of INFJs really enjoy if it's happening in the right way, where we're benefiting other people with our strengths as we lean on them and their strengths to help us where we're weak. There's this mutualism and this stronger team that can come of it. And keep in mind too, I think in the past, I've just leaned on my strengths so much that I didn't bother with the weaknesses, but we can get better with the weaknesses. I'm not saying that you have to spend all your time with your weaknesses, but we can certainly get better and we can grow and we should grow. And part of that is listening to that constructive criticism and hearing feedback. So in a nutshell, those are the five struggles that I've experienced and that I know other INFJs have dealt with. But There are more, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. If you know additional struggles, throw those in in the comments below. If you're watching here on YouTube or if you're listening to the podcast, feel free to throw them in the reviews. I'd love to hear your thoughts and how you have dealt with them or what you'd like to learn in the future so we can come back to it. I hope this was encouraging to you. If you'd like to learn more about your personality type, you can grab a free copy of my book, The INFJ Personality Guide, which hopefully will help you understand the mindsets that drive you and cause you to do what you do. And ultimately will help you come away understanding that you're not messed up or broken, but you have valuable gifts to offer the world and that you should offer the world. 
You can get a copy of the book absolutely free by going to infjbook.com and grabbing it there. So thanks again for listening today. Really enjoyed spending this time with you. Thanks for taking time out of your day. I loved spending it here with you and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next show.